Hi, this is Jack Kleinfeld, President of Kleinfeld Technical Services. This video will present a short introduction to infrared thermography. Longer videos with more detail will be available on the channel. In this video, I'll give you a little information about where to come to get more help or other information, and an overview of infrared thermography looking at what it is with a couple of selected examples of applications. Just for your general information, you can reach our company, Kleinfeld Technical Services, at our homepage, kleinfeldtechnical.com. Please visit us there for more information or to contact me for help on a project. Kleinfeld Technical Services is a consulting and service provider for infrared thermography. Some synonyms for infrared thermography, which you will find on YouTube, on Google, and elsewhere, are the acronym IR, Thermal Imaging, and Thermal Infrared. There may be some subtle differences in their definitions, but they are not so uh, different that we need to be concerned about them here. Infrared thermography is, uh, roughly speaking, taking pictures of temperature. That's not totally scientifically accurate, but it is an easy way to think of what it can do for you. A little more accurately, it's a non-contact image-based method to examine temperature or thermal patterns in objects. It has a wide range of applications, including non-destructive testing, or NDT, energy studies, and product and process development, analysis, and improvement. Let's look at a few infrared samples. This is the result of an infrared roof moisture survey looking for water in the roof. In the hands of a properly trained or experienced infrared thermographer, uh, infrared can be used to detect wet areas in a building roof. The brighter areas that are marked with the red arrows are warmer than the rest of the roof, and this is indicative of water uh, in the uh, roof under its surface. Uh, infrared could be used for energy issues in buildings and elsewhere. Uh, this image of the exterior of a high-rise in New York shows one floor's worth of a column uh, containing a pipe chase where they neglected to insulate the pipe chase. You can also look at the interior of buildings to identify issues of failed or missing insulation, and that's a very common application. Uh, infrared can be used to identify areas of failure. This instance is an example of a building, but it can be used for a broad range of non-destructive testing. The wet areas marked with the blue arrows are cooler than the rest of the building, and they therefore are indicative of having moisture. The bright areas marked with the green, area, area, the green arrows excuse me, are delaminated and that means that that part of the building facade is actually falling apart. Here's an example showing uh, a highly quantitative analysis. This is a uh, production facility making milk cartons. We have two blank blanks for the milk cartons that I'm outlining in green here. The black area between them is a gap. They are moving down the production line in this, in this direction. The uh, warm areas here are being heated by a gas burner which is this black object here. As a result we can look at an analysis of the temperatures and you can see on the temperature scale that these are fairly warm. Uh, the blue area and the blue line are analysis lines uh, that we're going to look at in the next slide. But we're characterizing the temperature uh, being achieved on this uh, device. Here is our results from that case. Uh, we have a plot here of uh, temperature in the uh, area of interest versus the speed of operation of that line. And uh, the correlation line is shown along with the data points. The R squared for this is 0.56, which means about 55% of the variation in that temperature is explained by the speed of the line. It means 44% is explained by other things which are not identified in this case. This type of analysis can be, form can be performed for a wide variety of applications. 
A very common application for infrared is electrical distribution system surveys where we're looking for hot spots that can be caused by an overloaded component, a failing component, a poor connection, a dirty connection, a weak connection, a corroded connection. In this instance we're looking at a 60 amp fused disconnect in a coffee manufacturing facility. The highest temperatures in the box there are 360 Fahrenheit. This is a fire waiting to happen. This unit was not overloaded, but it was in trouble. I hope those samples uh, pique your interest, explain something to you about infrared thermography. I invite you, as I have elsewhere, to visit us on kleinfeldtechnical.com for other information and applications, to contact me if you have questions, and ask that you look at the other videos as they become available on the channel, to comment on them, to subscribe to them, and to tell other people about them. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you back here soon.